All right, so I figured I'd do a video on brazing practice. I know I've mentioned it, and we seem to be getting a lot of new guys in the sealed system group who are new to sealed system repair. And really the first step to getting into sealed system repair is practicing brazing if you're gonna to use torches, because you've gotta get comfortable doing it. And you can practice on scrap fridges, but you can also practice on just a scrap compressor or even just get copper tubing and use a cardboard box. And if you do this, it's a lot cheaper and you don't need a ton of fridges hanging around and you can get a lot more practice in, which is really the key thing. Now you can use turbo torch, oxyacetylene, um, lock ring is an option. I don't have lock ring, so I'm probably not gonna be doing a video on those for any in the near future. I like these jewelers torches. This is oxyacetylene. It's a very small flame. It's very manageable. Um, I've used it quite a bit. I know a lot of guys like turbo torch, but regardless of what you're using, the key is practicing till you're comfortable with it. Um, this compressor came out of an LG. Uh, what I've actually capped the ends so that I can pressure test a couple of these brazes after I put them on there. And what we're gonna do is braze this stub into this port. Now, you wanna practice, the reason I like practicing with the boxes is because when you're out in the field, you, your compressor is in the fridge and you can't get behind it. You can't look straight down at it. You kind of have this view and there's an awful lot of stuff around it that if you put too much heat on, you're going to either melt or catch fire or otherwise damage. So the cardboard box is kind of a good bit of practice because you know obviously if you put too much heat on it, it's gonna catch fire and let you know that, hey, you've, you've warmed this up. Um, I find they're actually less forgiving than an actual fridge. So like the back wall of this, I gotta be real careful. They like to catch fire. On a regular fridge, that's gonna be a steel wall with uh, foam behind it. And if you get it too hot, I mean, you can catch the foam on fire through the little vent holes and stuff and you can have some crazy stuff happen, but it's a little more forgiving. But if you get, get used to not hitting that, you know, you'll be better off once you're actually out on a regular fridge. Now. Before you even start doing one of these connections, what I like to do is look at it and think about how I'm going to approach it. We're using small oxyacetylene flame and we're gonna use 15% silver brazing rod. And I like to look at it and think, how am I gonna, where am I gonna put my hands? What direction is the flame gonna go? So like I could go straight back like this. Um, you can go up from the bottom, which actually gives us a little more clearance. You can go, straight in. The other advantage to going up from the bottom is you'll be able to uh, better see where you're applying the braze. When I apply braze, I like to apply it on the opposite side of where I'm heating. The idea being that once the tubing is hot enough to melt the braze, it will wick around to the other side because the other side is hotter. And so that's kind of like a little bit of extra insurance that you're going to catch all the sides of the tubing. Now, some tricks with that, you can bend the end of your rod at a 90, and that lets you, if you're like, say you're going in like this, it's the only way you can get at it. You can push the bent end over into the joint behind the tube. Now, in this case, I'm probably gonna try and aim this torch a little bit upwards, and then I can go straight in, like so, onto that connection. But the main thing is you, you wanna think it through before you jump in at it. Look at what's around the compressor. Is there a way you can hold this a little differently that might work better? This gets real important if you're changing out an evaporator where you're usually a couple inches away from an awful lot of plastic that's usually gotta stay pretty pristine white looking. Otherwise, customers get upset that you've made their nice fridge that wasn't working. It, it may work now, but if you melt all the plastic, then it kind of defeats the point. Um, when you first start heating this joint up with oxyacetylene, one thing to keep in mind is heat control. And with these, you can adjust the flame length and the intensity of a mix of oxygen to acetylene. Um, but also I find more useful is position. You can bring the torch tip in close and that will be a real intense heat. And as you back it up, you'll get less heat on that, on that uh, tube. So at first, when you're bringing the whole thing up to temp and trying to get all that braze, because we're gonna have to, this had an existing tube in it, so it's got braze we have to get melted before we can even insert the tube. 
when you're trying to get that all to melt, you kind of want it closer in. And then once you start seeing signs that the braise is melting, you kind of want to back it off a little bit. Otherwise, you run the risk of overheating one side of it and starting the tubing melting. Let's give this a shot. Needed a little more oxygen with that. I like listening for kind of a roaring kind of flame. Um, and if you don't know the parts of a flame, you might look them up. You've got the center cone and then the outer flame. And the center cone, if you have too much oxygen, I don't know how well this will show, it'll get real sharp and needly. And that's a uh, oxygenating flame. If you don't have enough oxygen, it'll spread out. And that's a carbonizing flame. What you want is a kind of rounded point, kind of like a bullet point. And that is a neutral flame, which is what you want for this. Um, get a good pair of pliers for grabbing tubing with. Can't grab it with your hands, it's way too hot. You'll burn the daylights out of yourself. You want a pair that feels comfortable. I've had these for a long time and probably have taken all of the temper out of them. So first, we're gonna heat this up, push the new tubing in. Um, I don't know how well it'll show up in the video, but as the braise starts to melt, it'll kind of change silver color and eventually go green. This is gonna be an ugly braise, but fucking. The back side of the tubing kind of wallowed out on me. So, heating it and just putting a little bit. You look for it to start melting. And then it'll wick around. and then let it cool. <laughs> yeah, this is an ugly joint, but that is why it is called practice. <laughs> and also full disclosure, I already lit one box on fire in a previous attempt. So let's see what we got. So yeah, when I was pushing it in, it, the tubing actually broke because this has been debrazed and rebrazed a few times. But if you look, even with that, it's pretty ugly but it still wicked around. And I would give even odds that that's actually sealed. We'll find out. Let me do one out here in the open so you can better see it. Um, in the field, you might clean the carbon off of one of these. We're just gonna kinda go with it because I don't have my emery cloth handy. So, I pre-swedged a couple of these so that it's not too crazy. So this will slip in here pretty good. Get the torch lit. So going from the front, you're bringing it up, it's getting reddish. Start touching in with this and you can see when it melts. Now it's got some melted on the back and now as I bring the flame on the front, it wicks around it and travels down between the tubes there. And then cools. Bring it up until it starts to get a little orangey. Back it off. And wick it around. Uh, let's see. Here's my 
amazing camera skills. You see it's wicked. Looks like I got a little bit of a bumpy on the bottom of that one. So I used a little more braze than I needed. But likely sealed pretty good. Again, if you want to do some practice, we all have roughly one million boxes floating around. Get the top flap out of the way, just so it doesn't get in the way of So right here, I almost grabbed the tubing, and that is, if you're new to this, probably the easiest thing to do that you will burn yourself because you get moving fast or doing something unfamiliar, and you go to move a piece of tubing that you just just joined, and it's red hot, and you will feel dumb when you do it, and everyone does it. If someone tells you they've never burned themselves doing this, they are lying. So it's a practice thing, and it's kind of one of those, you gotta get in the habit of not going too quick and think about what you're doing before you do it. So this one, we're going the other way inside of our practice box. I'll be happy if I can do this one. Get it on there. Can't get it too close. Can't hold it in one place too long. It's a little smoky, eh, a little bit, but not too bad. But on this end, I can get behind that. Some nitrogen and a core tool because I need a T and it's handy. And Robin Air process adapter. Like I said, about stuff being way too hot sometimes. Let me see if I can't get this to cool a little more quickly. process adapter has a rubber gasket in it so if you don't cool the tube down you're gonna melt it and these are expensive and useful and I don't want to ruin it
engagement. Love the stubby gauges. And get that threaded on. Flow meter actually has a point where it'll blow off. All right. And now for 15 minutes of dead camera time focused on this gauge. I'm entirely kidding, but it seems to be holding. So I don't feel any leaking, and of course I'm actually out of the leak soap at the or the bubble solution at the moment. But yeah, it's not a terrible way to practice brazing. Give it a go.